started in the demo here and uh, to show a overview of ThinkHub and, and, uh, and then we'll segue uh, with uh, Andy who's gonna talk about the ThinkHub Agile features uh, after that. So let's start with the basics. Uh, ThinkHub is, uh, is basically a tool, it's a collaboration tool, a visual collaboration tool that allows for users to have a really, really uh, large digital uh, workspace. And you can see uh, behind me, I've got a, uh, a three panel wall, but ThinkHub can work on a single panel 1080p screen that could be 46 inches all the way up to massive, you know, 20 foot uh, interactive you know, touch wall. And the nice thing about it is that I have about uh, 20 times more space than the physical size of the screen. So it gives me a lot of uh, a lot of real estate to sort of put my content, arrange it the way I want to. Uh, we can create sort of more or less space by, you know, I can pinch and zoom. Um, and so very, very sort of intuitive. And I can always see where I, where, where I am on the canvas. In the upper left-hand corner, I've got what we call the canvas key, which gives me sort of an overview of, uh, of everywhere. So, you know, if I get lost and I want to kind of go back to where I was, I can just tap on that, on that content and it brings me right back. But, um, so let's um, start uh, talking about how do we actually get um, content onto the onto the canvas. We have a whole host of ways, and I'll go through a few of them now. So in the uh, lower left-hand corner here, we have what's called uh, the media tray. This could be mapped to any um, you know directory on your on your on your network. Could be in the cloud, and the content that just you know and it supports a folder structure, and the content just uh, just appears here, and you just you just literally bring it up by by dragging you know the uh, the, the the content onto the uh, onto the canvas. I can move, you know, uh, the individual items. We can, you know, pinch and zoom using natural gestures, as you would expect. And I'm going to just really pause really quickly and show, like, this is when we talk about these, um, you know, these uh, some of these big room planning sessions. This is sort of the environment. So you can imagine what what Andy's going to go through. This is sort of what we're 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 talking about, sort of um, making, you know, more digital. So when we have this content on the screen, I can tap on any item. I can go ahead and uh, make some, you know, annotations on the content. We can grab, you know, snapshots of that content. I can, I can make it, I can make it take up, you know, part of the screen or or or, or the entire screen. And uh, we can also, on the fly, we can email or um, you know, rotate it or, or send it to a send it to a printer. So we have a lot of things that we can do with with all of these um, all these items. We have a series of uh, of apps as well that uh, can be really useful, like um, your browsers. We can open up you know x number of you know web browsers on the on the screen, and of course all the same tools apply. When I get a you know web browser on, I can I can just quickly you know grab a snapshot and bring it onto the screen. Uh, we can. We can, of course, um, you know, be able to put these uh, these uh, these notes onto the screen as well, and and grab them. And um, the way that one way that you can enter the text on here is just by just by typing with this virtual keyboard. So we have um, some of these applications. Uh, the the last thing I'll cover is device connectivity. Of course, people coming into a room or collaborating from other locations are going to want to connect devices. And uh, you can do so on any network in the world, whether it's your own corporate network or, uh, or even a cellular network. And so um, devices just appear here. The way that these devices uh, can be connected, they can be connected with hardline inputs, or we can connect wirelessly, which is what we've done here in the room. So I'm going to grab, I can see uh, that Blair has, uh, has her computer up on the screen, and I can just go ahead and whatever content she's got on that screen gets, gets mirrored in real time. What's also really nice about uh, the way that we handle this is that um, not only can we uh, see the, what the contents on the screen and mirror those devices, but I can also control them. So whatever I'm actually controlling uh, Blair's laptop here. So you can you can immediately um, whatever software you're running on these devices can be can be can be can be controlled on the on the ThinkUp Canvas. And by the way, this is being done with an app that we call AirConnect. AirConnect is the app that's available on any platform, on Mac, Windows, iOS, Android. Uh, it's just a free download. You can go to our website and, and, and grab it. And that's what establishes the, you know, the handshake between ThinkHub and, and that device. Um, when you're connected with, um, uh, you know, with AirConnect, you can also do the inverse of what I just described. So I've got my laptop here. And again, I could be in the same room or I could be uh, you know, across the world. And now I, I see all the content. Uh, on my laptop, and uh, more so, I can do things like point to different areas and say, you know, you can see that uh, right now I'm pointing to this little area and, and you know, calling attention to different parts of the screen. I can also um, uh, I can also control uh, the screen as well. And so everything that I'm doing on the on the canvas, I can also um, do from my laptop. So it 
gives users that are not in the room, uh, not only can they see and visualize everything, but you can also you know, interact with the canvas. So it gives a real, um, it just, just, just gives a, a whole host of, uh, of benefits. Last thing I'll mention is that you can always, at any time, you can see any of the users that are, that are connected. And uh, you can, if you want, if let's say you have a big session, you have, I don't know, maybe 30 different people that are, that are connected simultaneously, and you want to make it so they can't control the canvas, you can, you can disable that as well. So this is um, ThinkHub, and uh, now we'll, I'll turn it over to, to Andy and have him talk about ThinkHub Agile. Uh, thanks, Marco. Uh, so I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about uh, what we've been working on at T1V to uh, help you with Agile, uh, ThinkHub Agile. Uh, so first, I'm going to start by hiding the tray down here so we can get a little bit more screen real estate to work with. And then if we pan up here, uh, the central mechanic of, of, uh, of ThinkHub Agile is, is what we call uh, groups. Um, basically, groups are a way of us managing content on the canvas. So we can take anything and put it into a group, and we can maneuver it around uh, all together. So you see here, I can take all of these notes move them behind things, I can toss them. Uh, it can really support any kind of movement. And the goal here is to give you a tool that helps you manage large amounts of content. So uh, for example, I can take the things in a group and I can reorder them and switch their order. Uh, I can also take them from one group and put them into another group by dropping it on that group. So if I want to move it, and then you can see, you can also set up a theme for each group, which is then put uh, added to the notes when they're moved into that group. And then if you decide that you want to move it back, you can just move it right back. And then we have another, a number of other options that are in our group menu at the top that allow you various kinds of fine-grained fine control of the, uh, of the groups. Uh, for example, I can turn off alignment, move the group header, and turn it back on, and move all of the members to that group header. If I want to just momentary align, momentarily align it, I can just momentarily align it this way. I can also support uh, a different kind of layout. So let's say that we're working on things and I want to size this up. I want to move these to the side and then I want to lock all of those in position. I can press the position lock button and then move all of that together to any part of the canvas that I want. Move this over a little bit more and once again, move it together. Uh, we also have some various uh, convenience features for managing the content in the notes or uh, dealing with large amounts of content. For example, uh, you can toggle edit in all of the uh, notes. So I can quickly make a change to one of these notes, and then I can toggle edit off for all of the notes in your group. You can also hide the group. So if I want to hide the group, move it over here, and unhide it, I can move all the content in the group easily. We also have a few other options for managing the theme of any given group. So for example, uh, I can change the arrangement of my group to a radial layout. Now all of the group members are a little bit close to our group header, but we can also increase the spacing. And this just really gives you a way of assembling a canvas that allows you to manage all of the notes that you're dealing with easily and effectively. Uh, I can also reorder these, place them into a layout, you can maneuver it around. And then I have these two toggles here. One is auto apply theme, the other is auto add on drop. Uh, and basically these are just basic, simple toggles for how it behaves when you move things from one group to another. Uh, so if I have auto add on drop turned on, then I can drop something and add it to the group. And then if I have uh, auto apply theme, then it takes on the characteristics of that group. If it's not on, when I move it, the original color of the note will be preserved. Uh, one more convenience option that we have uh, is to adjust the size to the first item. Okay, so if I put this back in a grid, and reposition these, I can then resize these group members to whatever size I want and adjust all the group members to that size. And then if we tweak the spacing a little bit, now we have more visible notes. Uh, we can also tweak the group theme. So if I want to change the background color of all the notes in that group, I can turn it to green. And then I can change the font color to red. 
So really, the group dynamic is just a way of managing all of the different items on the canvas. Uh, you can also change the name. So if we open the tray back up down here, uh, we can also support adding a new note to the canvas or adding a new group. So uh, you can see here, uh, if you've used ThinkHub before, uh, we have an expanded apps tray now where you can launch multiple different kinds of apps along with the traditional browser note and sketch that you might be familiar with. So I can add a note to the canvas here. And then I can easily add that to a group of my choosing. Any AirConnect participants can also add uh, notes to the screen, and they can even add it to a group uh, from AirConnect. So if my two demonstrators would like to add a couple of notes to the canvas. And you can see this new note was positioned in the group that it was assigned to, as was this one. And then you can maneuver it around just like you could with any normal grouping behavior. Great, so that's the basic concept of groups. Uh, now, one other thing that I wanted to show you is we've added a new option to the ThinkHub menu, uh, which is ThinkHub Agile. And this is basically where we're going to continue adding tools to aid in different Agile processes and different Agile uh, ceremonies. So uh, one example is the uh, ThinkHub Agile key that we have here. So you can see that we have, uh, we have our three groups listed here in a key, and then any theme that was applied to them is uh, in dots to the left of them. And then if I want to zoom in on any one of those, I can actually, uh, I can actually just tap them, and it's moved to the center of the canvas, and it uh, fits all of the group members into the frame. Uh, I can do that for any group that's added. And then if I wanted to, I can also add a new. I can also add a new group to the canvas from our apps tray once again, and then that will appear in our group header key right there. Now we'll get back to this in a moment, but one more thing that I wanted to show you before we do. Uh, because a lot of Agile ceremonies have specific data that you might want to, uh, that you might want to put in any notes that you put on the screen, uh, we envision sort of the early brainstorming session as using a simple note, but we've also offered slightly more complex notes for capturing more data than the traditional note. Uh, these are just a couple of examples uh, that we envision, but we plan to add many more. Uh, one example of this that you can see here Uh, this is a retrospective template. So if we have someone that wants to add a retrospective item, which is a, a type of Agile ceremony, uh, you can classify the note as start, stop, or continue. And then you can enter text as desired. Uh, and then we also have, uh, we have this task note, which includes a number of items that you might recognize if you've ever worked with any Agile tools like Jira or Rally. Uh, you have uh, priority settings here. You can uh, set the number of story points. You can add a description. And these, like anything on the canvas, these can be added to uh, groups easily. So if I wanted to add this to this group, it's immediately added to the bottom of the group and uh, takes on the properties of that group. The last thing I'd like to show you today we've added a sorting feature because one of the problems with Agile or one of the problems with these processes is that sometimes it's difficult to manage the number of items that you have on the screen. If you have a large meeting, say 50 people, all adding notes to the screen, it's difficult to manage all of that. So we've also added a search feature to the canvas. Uh, in this text box here, I can enter a search and any, anything that meets my search criteria will be highlighted and everything else will be grayed out on the canvas. So for example, if I look for the word platform, then you can see here and over here uh, notes that contain the word platform are highlighted and everything else is grayed out. 
And then if I want to center on just those results, so make sure that I have all of them on screen, I can press center results. And ThinkHub automatically zooms in and, uh, and repositions to fit all of the notes that meet the search criteria in frame. Now, if I also want to, say, move all of these to their own group, I can do that by pressing group results here. And now all of my notes that meet the search criteria are in a group here. So one, one more thing that we wanted to uh, show you guys uh, is one more way that you can use ThinkHub to facilitate agile practices. So here we have set up uh, sort of what you can imagine as like a morning stand-up dashboard. And basically what this allows us to do is look at any relevant information coming from other agile tools. Uh, so uh, we have three different JIRA boards that you can look at, and this is also a rally board. And then we can do any kind of interaction that you might want to do on these. Uh, you can move them up and down. You can, um, you can zoom things in. You can select a task and uh, look at it more closely. Uh, you, can also, uh, you can also move things between swim lanes. So if you see here, I can just... Uh, grab one of these and move it over to a different swim lane. So we really envision this as a way to work with your Agile tools in a collaborative fashion as opposed to on a single, uh, on a single device. Uh, you can have uh, people on their laptops making changes. You can make changes directly from the screen. Uh, so we really view it as a solution for, uh, for all of your other Agile rituals that are centered around tools that you're already using. So those are just a few of the things that we wanted to demo for you about what we're working on with ThinkHub Agile. It's very much a work still in progress, but we think that these tools offer a lot more flexibility for how you use content on the canvas. Mm -hmm.